What up everyone? So, time to start on the boxes of June. And I'm actually not horribly behind this month. Um, I'm recording this long, I still have a bunch of videos that I need to post online, but I'm doing good as far as recordings, only like two or three boxes have shown up, so. And this month shouldn't be a very big month because I've canceled so many recently. So I may actually be able to catch up for like the first time ever and be able to do boxes on time when they arrive. Like holy shit, like what a crazy concept for my channel. Anyway, whoop. in the meantime, we got Marvel Collector Core and we got Women of Power. Now, um, I was hoping since I got this box on time and I'm doing the review on time, I could avoid spoilers because I always usually have to. Still didn't, I accidentally came across one. And I heard some people were disappointed in it. It's just so hard. And I also heard that Funko posted their own unboxing of it. So it's just like, man, could nothing be a surprise anymore. But, you know, I was never too excited about this box anyway. I kind of always said, like, it could be really good, but it also could be horrible. And my opinion on it before I even open and see what's in it is, like, I like, I'm fine with women superheroes. I have no problem with them. I like the traditional ones, like the ones that have been around, like She-Hulk and Miss Marvel and ones that have been female for a long time. Not so much of a fan of the ones that they just recently made female, like the Lady Thor. Like, I like the original Thor better. I don't like it when they change stuff. So, I just want to throw my opinion out before I see what's in there so it doesn't seem biased in any way. Oh, Pup's excited. You want to come up? You see what's in here? Come on. Oh, there we go. Oh, I'm wearing a black shirt, though. I'm going to get puppy fur all over it. All right. Let's see what we got in your Pups. So, first things first, we got our classic patch and pin combo. So let's take a look at these. Can you smell? Yeah. It's good stuff, huh? Okay. All right. Are you getting down? I got to show these. All right. All right. Pup. Oh, my gosh. There you go. All right. So let's get a close up of these. Do do. So it looks like we got Captain Marvel and... Who is this? Oh, Spider-Woman. It's focusing, yeah. So Spider-Woman and Captain Marvel, I believe. That is one of the Captain Marvels. Um, I, you know, I've always known her as Miss Marvel. Captain Marvel to me was always a guy, and Miss Marvel was always a girl. But that's just me. There's actually a story behind that, but I'll get into that later on. Let's just get into the items first. Let's see. Oh, and they have a description card. Great. I actually really like it. I guess they're only doing that for Marvel Collector Core, because none of the other boxes have that. I wish they did, though. I really like it when they put a description card. And last time they just talked about like how difficult it was making the items. Which I think is fine, like it's just cool to get info on it and to see what's in there just in case you miss something so you know you don't have a missing item or anything like that. So I really like that they put the description card and they do a nice one too, I'll try not to look at it, but they have like a nice quality card there. I like that. And it looks like our next box is Spider-Man, just showed that, so. Alright, so, got a nice shirt here. It smells fresh. I love the smell of fresh t-shirts, it's one of my favorite smells. Alright, see what we got here. Do do do, do do do, come on. All right, so we got our classic Spider-Gwen here, and we got it in the black and white style, which, you know, I like. Um, the only thing is Spider-Gwen's kind of known for her, like, interesting color scheme, so I'm surprised they didn't do it in color, but I don't mind it not in color. I like the whole black and white style. Keeping it simple, they seem to have focused on one character, and Spider-Gwen is a newer character, like, pretty recently, so I actually don't, I don't mind her. I actually kind of like her. And I don't feel like it's too much of a forced thing because they've already had Spider-Woman and like Spider-Girl and like different variations of it. So I'm okay with that one. So it doesn't seem forced or anything like that. And I like her costume. I think it looks cool. So it, pretty basic design. The quality of the t-shirt seems very nice. And I actually like the fit of these Funko shirts. They actually fit pretty decently. So I'm actually a fan of that one. Like I got one on now. And they come in a little cardboard thing so you can't try them on usually. So I like to know that they do fit and they usually do. This one fits pretty well. So I like that. Um, as far as Spider-Gwen, I'm sure anyone getting the box would have assumed she's in there. So I, I don't think anyone's shocked by that. So I think if you got this women's, um, Marvel Women box, then I, I'm pretty sure you are at least somewhat of a fan of Spider-Gwen. So I think most people like that. The only di the way it could have done better is maybe better design, but that's just being nitpicky. So I'll give that an 8 out of 10. I think that's a cool shirt. All right, next. Looks like we got a comic. Civil War 2. So I have not read up on this series at all. I very much like the first Civil War. It seems like they're rebooting it. Or not, sorry, not rebooting it, but they're continuing the story in Civil War 2. Um, so I'll have to check that out. And then it's got all the women on the front. So we got Miss Marvel, Elektra, uh, I think that's Lady Thor. But yeah, got all the women there. And our, it's number one variant, so that's cool. 
no surprise there at all. Alrighty, let's see. Okay, cool. This is nice. So, we got a pop figure, and this is Squirrel Girl. So, I don't know about you guys, but I've actually heard a lot of Squirrel Girl talk in the past couple years, but haven't really seen anything from her. <laughs> So, I, um, I've always known about her. She's never been a very popular character. The reason she came up in Topic was because I heard a lot of rumors, didn't end up coming true, that Squirrel Girl was supposed to be in Marvel vs. Capcom 3. And I'm pretty sure she actually was going to be, but they, long story short, they ran out of time, they didn't get to put as many characters as they wanted, blah blah blah. She didn't end up being in there. I've also heard chatterings here and there that there's supposed to be a Squirrel Girl movie that they kind of greenlit and then kind of like took back and like shelved it for a while, so I'm not sure where they're at again, if they're going to do it or not, but uh, again, long story short, I just heard about her a lot, so she keeps showing up. And I think it's cool that it comes with a little squirrel. I like the ones that came with a little extra item, so that's cool. And as far as I know, there hasn't been a Squirrel Girl pop, or at least this one isn't a variant, it's actually an exclusive sculpt, which is what you would hope for. Um, variant paint jobs are fine, but you always, I think everyone prefer to get an exclusive sculpt because that's where it gets the value, because it's only one of a kind. Obviously, it's a bobblehead, as all the Marvel ones are, but still, that's cool. Um, I don't know a ton about the character, but she seems pretty legit. It's one of those characters where it's, like, just goofy enough to be, like, interesting and funny, so she seems like a cool character, so that, I think that's a pretty good choice. And one I didn't even think of. I didn't suspect they would have put Squirrel Girl, so I think that's a good choice. All right. We got two more. These are the ones I got spoiled, so I did see these. So these are Mystery Minis, which I'm actually happy to see because we haven't seen these um, since the Ant-Man one. I think they were the only one that did it, and I think they should do it more with Star Wars and with DC. I like when they do exclusive uh, Mystery Minis because you really don't see them too often. The only time you really see them is with like Hot Topic gets them. I think Walmart and Walgreens get some, but they're a huge pain in the ass to get. So I actually do like when we see exclusive mystery minis, because we just don't see them that often. As far as the characters, we got Captain Marvel and She-Hulk. Uh, two of my, not my favorite characters, but you know, whatever. Uh, that's still cool, I like that. And you know exactly which one you're going to get. Um, the When they did Ant-Man, you got the option of four characters. You only got, I think you got two boxes, but it was a mystery. This one you actually know. So the cool thing about this is, if you did want to sell it, you can keep it in the package. You don't have to open it up and sell it as separate figures. And these are going to be bobbleheads, just in case if someone didn't already know. They're always going to be bobbleheads, so just know that so you don't have to open the case to find that out. So there we go. So that was all the items in the box. So we'll take a short little break, and then we'll talk about some value, and I'll talk about some other interesting facts about these characters, and then we'll give this box a final review and value. See you soon. All right, we are back. So let's talk about this box and get it some value. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Alrighty. So, starting off with the shirt. So on the card, they showed some concepts of the other shirts they were planning on doing. And those actually looked really cool too. And this is the final design they settled on. I really wish they had done all of them and done variant ones. I like it when they do that, when they give options and different boxes, different people get different shirts. I think that's really cool because then you can go buy the other variations of them and people usually sell them pretty cheap. So I like that. But that's when they sell it on. I still think it's cool though. I give it an 8 out of 10. But it'll get the standard 12 to $15 shirt value. But just know you can probably find that much, much cheaper online because people sell shirts super cheap. But I always give shirts the same value. Anyway, the comic. This is going for somewhere between $4 and $7. Varies a little bit, but again, no surprise there. These comics very rarely uh, go for that much. Even though they're bagged and boarded and exclusive, they just don't hold that much value because they do them quite often. So that's pretty average. Comics these days usually cost 4 or 5 so that 4 to 7 value like it increases a little bit, but not too much. But that's pretty standard. Then, our pop figure, Squirrel Girl. So right now, this is going for about 28 to 30 now, something to note here, that value will go down. It absolutely will. How much? Um, I don't know. If you, if you ask my honest opinion, after a while, it's probably going to go down to 20 to 25, but that's just a guess. Um, so, so something to note about this box specifically, and a lot of other ones, to be quite honest, the earlier um, I open this box, the more value it has. The first day that comes out and people see that, that's what it's going to go for the highest value. It's at 28 to 30 right now, but give it a few weeks, and by like the end of the month, it's probably going to go down at least a few dollars, if not like half that price. It always happens, so just know 
as of right now, that's the price it's at, but it will not stay at that price. It's not going to hold strong on that. So that will come down at least a few dollars. But again, as of right now, that's what it is. Also, keep in mind that if you're patient enough to wait for an auction, you'll absolutely get it cheaper than that. That's always the case. Um, at least a few dollars cheaper than that. But for the buy it now, if you want it right now and you don't want to wait for an auction, that's the price you're going to have to pay. So, next, the mystery minis. I'm going to group these together. Um, sold separately, it's a totally different price. Separately, um, these were like 8 to 10 a piece, but the bad news is, grouped them together, there's people selling both of them online for about 10 to $12 for the pair of them, which is somewhat reasonable. It's unfortunate because they are exclusive and they are really cool, but, you know, to be totally honest, that's about what mystery minis cost. And these ones, although they're exclusive, they're not super amazing or anything like that. They're, it's cool that it's exclusive, but, you know, it's still pretty average for a mystery mini. So that's the bad thing about it. The, even though it's exclusive from this box, it, it really doesn't increase the value so much because they put out so many every single month, it, the value really doesn't go up. So they cost pretty much the same as normal mystery minis would. So if you're looking to collect and make a profit off this box, probably not going to ever again because there's just too many of them out there. All right, last one, the little patch and pin. I think I said Captain Marvel when I opened it, but it's Miss Marvel. So I think I misspoke on that. I can't remember what I said. Anyway. The patch and pin, this is going to go for about six or seven, which is pretty average. Usually I say five to seven. This one's like six to seven, so pretty average for the pair of these. No matter if it's Marvel, Star Wars, DC, it kind of always is around that price, which again, it's pretty reasonable for what it is. So we're seeing this trend with all the boxes from Funko, like I said, Star Wars, Marvel, DC, and whatever they do in the future, that the things in here aren't really increasing in value too much because there's so many of them out there. So the only thing that really increases in value is the pop figures, and that's because they're so incredibly collectible, because people go crazy for pop stuff, but for nothing else, which is so weird to me. I don't get that, but that's not me. Anyway, that brings our value on the low end of 60, on the high end of 71, which is pretty, pretty decent. You got right around double your value. So um, overall, I thought this was a good box. Um, the characters in here aren't, aren't the most popular, but that was kind of to be expected. <laughs> You see this trend of any franchise, Marvel specifically, where they're trying to branch out and make things more, I guess you could say politically correct, I don't know what else other way to put it, where they're trying to make more female characters, they're trying to make more ethnic characters of different races and sexual orientations and all that stuff, which I'm all for, but it kind of bugs me when they take characters that already exist and then change them. If you want more female characters or black people or gay ones or whatever, then make new ones. But don't change the ones we already have. And the, the unfortunate thing about it that no one really likes to talk about is when most of our favorite characters were made, they were made in like the 50s or before during a time where racism was fully in effect and sexism was fully in effect. So there just weren't that many of those characters. So you see them really trying hard now to push those characters, which is totally fine, but they're just, unfortunately, the female characters aren't as popular as some of the male ones. Some of them are, but not all of them. So um, it can kind of go either way. The collectability of a lot of these figures isn't going to be super high because, like I said, the characters just aren't that popular. Not because they're female. It has nothing to do with that. It's just they just happen not to be. Some of them are becoming popular. Like Spider-Gwen, she's really popular. Um, and she's probably the most popular. I really like Spider-Gwen. I think she's a cool character. But it's a new character. I like that. I like when they do new ones. But I don't, like I said, I don't like when they change it. <laughs> But some of the other characters are lesser known. Um, I'm familiar with Squirrel Girl, but I have a feeling that a lot of other people getting this box probably aren't familiar with it. She-Hulk, I would say, is very well known. Popularity-wise, I'm not sure what her popularity is. Um, Captain Marvel, Miss Marvel, those characters are kind of making a resurgence. So they will become very popular when the movie comes out, but at this point, not too much. So it's, it's, they will become popular, but they aren't that much right now. So, um, based on that, I'm going to give the box a 7.5, because you did get good value. Um, the character picks were fine, they're all good characters, but not uh, my favorite, and probably not the favorite of most people out there, but I'm sure a lot of people do like those characters, um, specifically like Spider-Man and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see the new movie, too, with uh, Miss Marvel slash Captain Marvel, but um, I... The funny thing about it is, I always get confused with Captain Marvel, because the interesting thing about it is that Captain Marvel is actually a DC character. That's why we always had Miss Marvel for Marvel and Captain Marvel for DC. Oddly enough, they recently changed that because Captain Marvel is Shazam. So, 
Um, recently, I think it was in like 2010 or something like that, in recent years they officially changed his name because there was such confusion. Up until that point, Shazam, his name was Captain Marvel, and Shazam was something he said, but that wasn't actually his name. Everyone called him that, but it wasn't his name, it was Captain Marvel. So there was a ton of confusion, so a few years ago they officially changed his name, and now Captain Marvel is back in Marvel because now the confusion is gone. So just a little fun fact, which I thought was very interesting. So, yeah, um, I still overall really like the box. I thought the Squirrel Girl pop was good. Um, but, yeah, let me know what you guys thought. If some of these characters are totally your favorite, if you love She-Hulk and Captain Marvel, then let me know because I, I, I'm trying to go the best off what I think you guys would like, but I don't know for sure. So let me know what you guys think about it, these characters, this box, whether you're happy or disappointed. Let me know in the comments. Let's talk about it, and then we'll revisit this in the monthly review. So, anyway. This has been the Marvel Collector Core, the Women of Marvel, and 8 out of 10 on the shirt, 7.5 on the box. Let's talk about this in the comics. Let me know what you guys thought, and we'll see you on the next video. Love y'all. Peace.